Ever since I made the first working remote control tank, I had realized that there was something new in the modeling world that I really enjoy. And in a future video, I want to make this rucker truck squig buggy actually drive around. But in order to do that, I'm going to need to do a little bit of research in how to make this car work. At first, I bought a Jeep, which is a very small 132 scale micro car. After realizing this is not going to fit inside the rucker truck without way too much modification, I decided that I needed to actually explore making my own car with perhaps a 3D printer. Now before I go ahead and put too much time into designing something, I want to test something with somebody else's design first. And this gets me into the parts testing phase long before I do any designing and wasting time without knowing whether any of this is going to work. And so I found this design by WidRC on Cult. And this is a good time to introduce the sponsors of this video, Hey Gears. Hey Gears produce a 3D printing system like no other. They also create a resin that I'm very interested in for engineering. This is ground affected. And if you want to know who I am, ask your mum. Hey Gears have created the Ultracraft Reflex, which is actually a 3D printer and is more than just that. It is your one-stop production platform. Hey Gears provides their users with a full printing service. This includes the hardware as well as the software. The Ultracraft Reflex produces commercial grade final results, industrial grade mechanical parts and powerful algorithms for greater precision with higher detail sharpness and smoother print services. Hey Gears employs a smart AR algorithms and automated features. From model optimization to post printing processing, intelligence and systemization make the whole printing process easier, beginner friendly and ensure the quality of the final prints. From model optimization, which is including repairing the model, defect detection and auto repair, to pre-processing, which is automated pre-processing, just click next repeatedly. The entire system has been designed with zero contact with resin in mind. So that means that the resin can automatically be filled in your vat and you will also get reminders when the resin is about to run out. For this model, I use the Ultraprint Modeling PAU-10. It is a strong ABS-like material specifically designed for use with the Ultracraft Reflex 3D printer. Using true UV for the best possible results, it is a high performance material suitable for the printing of final products and functional parts, featuring a long-term structural stability. And for this reason, I chose it to print this remote control car. There is also the independent washing box design, which means you do not need to touch resin at all during the printing process. Now I didn't use very many supports on my model because this one was printed specifically on the build plate flat, which is another big test that a lot of people may overlook. But essentially for me, printing something on the build plate flat is a very difficult task to do because you need to expose it just enough to keep the parts on the plate and if you do, you can end up with a really large elephant foot, which is where at the bottom of the print, you end up with a slightly wider piece than what the actual print is. And I'm gonna be totally honest when I say that this print came off with almost no elephant foot. There was a little bit, but it is expected because it needs to stay somehow on the build plate. However, it just peeled off the build plate. Like, I've never felt anything come off the build plate this easy. This build plate and the way that it comes up is amazing. I like everything about this build plate but when you use the app to support your models you will find that the supports will come off super easy sometimes you may need to use a little bit of warm water to help that but in general they come off really really easy
Something that I've found really interesting about the entire Hey Gears ecosystem is that everything is designed to be worked from the app. And this is because the whole system is designed to be controlled remotely and the software figures out exactly how long your part needs to be washed and cured. You get better print results with the dual UV wavelength final curing. This is a higher energy and power density with even curing across the entire build heart. Heikia's Ultracraft Reflex provide two curing methods. One is a high performance curing for better material performance and the other one is a rapid curing for clearer detail. I ordered a load of parts from orlandohunter.co.uk. I will leave a link for them in the description for you to find them so you can also order parts in the future if you want to make something like this. Also, by the way, they have Race Castle, which is this really crazy place full of toys. I'm going to show that in a future video, so make sure to keep your eyes out for that. Now obviously it was time to start building this car and most of this is just screwing everything together. Normally I would have to do a lot of drilling of parts, especially when it comes to 3D printed bits and I didn't have to drill anything. All of the screws pretty much fit. To be honest, the print was so precise that there were some times where the screws actually were too small to go in their place because the original designer had obviously designed with a little bit of this leeway so that the screws could go in and actually fit. And with this machine being so accurate, there was times where the screws were too small to fit in the holes that they were designed to go in. And speaking of the designer, I will leave a link for this guy in the description. Obviously a lot of these parts are built according to how this kit essentially was. I basically scavenged all the parts out of one model kit to make one that was 3D printed. Because 3D printed is just cooler, it's my own one. It's not one that anyone else has. There is only people who bought this one and printed it themselves have this model and I like that. Once I had got most of the mechanics out the way and I was ready to start painting the actual body of the car and I started out by giving everything a black primer and this is a citadel black primer there's nothing too fancy about this I sell this in my studio and uh, you can get it all over the world I then used a chrome spray on all the parts that I wanted to be metallic I used fluorescent colors and in this case fluorescent green to paint over the chrome once it had fully dried this gives it a metallic look but it's still nice and bright I then used a darker ink in some shaded areas so that I could have a gradient from the nice bright green to a little bit of a darker green. I did this on the body as well as on the metallic areas as well. As you can see I masked off certain areas just so that later on I could come back and add some more detail to this. I then sprayed all the metallic parts with a gloss clear coat and a matte coat over the body. While that paint was drying, it was time for me to put some of the mechanical bits together that come with the kit as well as add them to the parts that I printed. In some parts you can't even tell I had printed certain things. Now that the body was dry enough, I could add the checkers that I stole totally not from Space Marine's uh, transfer sheet, but we won't tell anyone. And this is all the parts laid out and ready to build the car. To build the car, I started out by gluing in the front shock tower thing. That was the only part out of this whole model that needed to be glued. The rest of it was mostly just clipping in the rods or the, uh, the sticks that hold the axles on the back of the car in place. Even the motor housing in this case, which holds the gears, is printed and I, I still can't get over it. There are these cool little uh, bumpers for the side of the car, which are now screwed into place. 
I still can't even believe that I'm saying these words screwing into resin I get it I've done this before but the way this felt is different I can't really explain it to you it's just felt very different I then had to set up the steering and screw on the cage onto the back of the vehicle I also decided to put some lights and I didn't have small enough LEDs for the front of this car and the reason I wanted to put some lights is so I could show you the transparency of the resin that hay gears make and so I will show you that near the end. I painted the battery holder so that it wasn't just a boring black blob and I screwed that into place after I had sprayed green over the top of it. I also clicked in all the shock absorbers and tested the viability of this being an actual working RC car. After I was convinced that it would be a car, I then soldered in the rest of the electronics and plugged in all the rest of the radio gear. I also installed the transparent light shields that I had printed using the transparent resin from Hay Gears. And once I had everything plugged in, it was time to call this model done. Hopefully this video inspires you to explore different avenues of 3D printing. It's particularly for me, it was the Hay Gears and the Ultracraft Reflex system. The resin itself is super flexible but also maintains rigidity. It's also really really strong against impact resistance and it takes screws very well. This kind of resin is something that I would use for engineering miniature parts for my tanks and all the things that I make that are remote controlled. One of the very important things when it comes to making stuff like this is the details and of course this machine packs all those details into the very great resins that they provide. I also do need to mention that none of these parts had any shrinkage that I noticed. Maybe there was, but at a scientifically uh, microscopic scale, perhaps, but I didn't see any kind of shrinkage. Parts fit perfectly, gears mesh together really well, and all round, very good resin and a material. And I've bashed this car all over the place. I've driven it out in the bush, I've driven it in my shop, I gave it to my nine-year-old to drive, and nothing's broken yet. So I can really attest to the strength of this resin, for the purposes that I'm using it for. Genuinely, when I started 3D printing, I never expected anything like this ever to be possible. And now, the future is looking very bright. So we are at the end of the video, and I would like to say a super special thank you to my patrons who support me making these videos. We got another new patron this week, and I'd like to thank him right now. And that is Walker Buck. Thank you, Walker Buck for blinding my eyes with the light of the Patreon and keeping the videos rolling. Now of course, we are at the best part of the video. This is really the only part that anybody really cares about and this is where I get to tell you if you don't like anything that you saw in this video, then you can please kindly just f*** off. I'm sorry Hey Gears, that's how I end all my videos, please don't be angry with me.